What a great move you made to join us in the trenches today because the great Phil Sims joins us in the trenches. Brought to you by First Star Logistics. And, and this one's this one's really good. I mean, Phil talks about quarterbacks, new quarterbacks in the National Football League. His Bill Parcells, Tom Coughlin stories are second to none. And that's uh that's worth its weight in gold. Just a lot of things, finances, you know, big money in the National Football League. It's Phil Sims at his best. And congratulations, you made a great choice. Really appreciate you taking the time to join us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we're coming to you from our outstanding studios, and we're in a brand new studio in a brand new building. Got to wow. love it. First Star Logistics, man, taking care of things. And boy, we have a guest that you love. I know you love. We've got feedback that you love this guy. Everybody loves this guy. Phil Sims is the name. 14 year quarterback in the National. 15. 15-year quarterback. Thank you. Right, yes. 15-year <laughs> right. quarterback in the NFL with the same franchise, the New York Giants. Right. First round draft pick. Seventh pick of the draft in 1979. He was the MVP of Super Bowl 21. Uh, he uh they beat Denver 39-20, not even a game. I mean, blew him out. He went 22 for 25, 88%, 150.9 passer rating, record still. Super Bowl records for quarterbacks with at least 14 attempts. Wow. Multiple Pro Bowls. Man of the Year. NFL Man of the Year in 1993. Um, and Ring of Honor. And he had his jersey retired. Number 11's retired. Nobody will ever wear number 11 again for the New York Giants. I mean, come on, Phil. That's pretty good <laughs> stuff, man. <laughs> well, there's a lot there, Dave. I don't know where to even begin. Thank you for the kind words. Bill Parcells once said to me, you know, I guess it was when he was there, you know, how it goes, the seasons yeah. and years. And and he says, Sims, don't worry about it. When you retire, they're going to like you. <laughs> and I said, okay. That's wow. high praise coming from him. I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> okay, was that a slap in my face once again? Or does he mean it to me? He, you know, whatever, you yeah. know. But I, I listen, I need to write a book one day about just Bill Parcells and me, about our interactions. I, I saw him last week. You know, we had this, the Giants, it's their 100th year in professional football this year. Wow. Wow. So they're doing a lot of celebrations. So we had a big get together. Uh, maybe it's been two weeks now. I can't. And uh, I saw Coach Parcells. Hey, Sims, good to see you. Boom, boom, boom. And right to the attack, he went. I'm like, damn, you're 83 years old. You're still not like, giving me a break. Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, he goes, hey, you know, I had that horse I named that to you, Sims. And I said, oh, yeah, no. I know. I watched the one race he was in. He goes, he called it Fabulous Sims. And he goes, the SOB couldn't run. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even tell you exactly how he said it. But I watched the race on my computer. Yeah. And it was, uh, I think it was at Saratoga. Um, and to say he was last... <laughs> Was an understatement. <laughs> I'm gonna say he was at least 30 minutes behind the second to the last horse. Oh, <laughs> and right away, as soon as the race is over, I got a text from Parcells. Well, I wish he could run a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, but my other thing is too, man. I mean, I here I am sitting in my office, which is not even really my office, my son Matt. He does, we do these podcasts together. So he yeah. took over my office. Now I've moved into a dungeon in my house to so I can do something. And <laughs> it's all coming to this. Look at your get up and set up there. I'm wow. Not, I know, man. You First know, I was taking care of business with us. I'm, I'm unbelievable. Done. Can't hide money, Dave. And it's showing <laughs> in your setup there, man. It's unbelievable. Wait, oh, you, I see the new, well, not the new, but I've seen those helmets before. I do love those helmets. Yeah, I do too. Singles. Yeah. And the I, other thing is, too, yeah, you're right. I was the seventh player pick in the 1979 draft. And uh, Mike Brown once told me, you know, he didn't think I threw enough spirals when he watched me or something <laughs> in college. <laughs> uh, he said that to me. <laughs> I went, 
okay, well, I threw a hell of a lot of spirals in the NFL. I don't know what, they, whatever. But remember that draft, Jack Thompson was the third pick of the draft. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what – I've never looked it up. How much did Jack Thompson ever play for the Bengals? He uh, had a, a brief a brief stay. It, was, it wasn't that long. He didn't start that many games for the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, I don't think he did and everything. You know, hey, I will say this. When I played whatever – and he was on the other, he would come and talk to me. He couldn't, man, was he a nice guy? He's a great dude. He is. God. And, you know, I was like, you know, there was no rivalry between us. And I knew about him even in Moorhead State. I heard about Jack Thompson, the throwing Samoan. Throwing Samoan. There you go. Uh, yeah. And I'm glad he went to the Bengals because I, and there was no chance I was ever going there. They never even considered me. But I wanted to, you know, Cincinnati's just too close to Louisville where I grew up. And I just, I wanted to be away. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know why, but I just felt like it's always best just to get away from everything and no distractions. Uh, did I know I was going to New York? Well, I did before the draft, but you right. know, a month or two before I'm like, you know, where will I go and all that stuff. So, but it, it works out for everybody. And, but I, I wanted to bring it up. Jack Thompson was such a good dude. Yeah. And yeah. I'm glad you reiterated that too. No question. But Moorhead State, I mean, you know, hey, Moorhead State, that's that's right in the region, man. Yeah, it's not Ooh. far. You know, I think not far. I think when I, I'm not sure if I, I just say this, I could be wrong about all this, but I think Mike Brown did drive down to watch me in a game. I think he did. I know. I remember him talking about that. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, I must not have thrown thrown it very well because he didn't consider it after that. <laughs> <laughs> hey uh, man, I tell you, I tell you, it's it's. Uh, oh shoot. Well, whatever. It's all good. Good stuff. Good memories. But now you're a world champion, Phil. What the heck? Yeah, yeah, we lucked out and got got it through. You know, I'm talking to you. You were part of a lot of really good teams and all that. And I and I mean this when I tell fans and and in interviews. Yeah, I'm proud of what the fact that I was part of two Super Bowl championship teams and all that. Yep. But damn, I'm still upset about the years we didn't win the Super Bowl. Then I thought, wow, we got a Super Bowl team, and we screwed it up. Yeah. And it, you know, I, I guess everybody, I mean, are you that way too a little? You just go, well, we, you were on some good teams and. But. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like, man, you know, the biggest opponent you have to, have to overcome sometimes is yourself. You know, I mean, you have to take care of business. You have to take care of your own business before knocking somebody else off, you know, and it was always, that was the situation. It was like, Okay, yeah, they're they're a good team, they, but man, we beat ourselves, you know. We, yeah, it's the worst. We, we, oh. if we had played like we had played, you know, the entire season. Pick that game to stub the toe is a is a rough deal to accept, man. It really is. Oh, it is. You know, we played the Rams in the playoffs in '89. I thought we were a Super Bowl team, and you know, yeah. that, that was probably just whatever, however you want to phrase it, a really bad game by me. In other words, I played too careful. Damn. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's what bothers me. And then I was always taught, especially by Bill Parcells. Hey, it's not a game of perfection, Sims. Quit trying to be perfect. Just yeah. let's play. And uh yeah, so I, I it's amazing how much I think about. I'll be driving in the car and go, damn. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's it stays with you, man, doesn't it? it yeah, like people are probably driving next to me going, oh, look at that guy, he's talking to himself. <laughs> Which I have a tendency to do, but that's okay. Well, you, you're obviously your your NFL career wasn't just good; it was great. I mean, no, you, no, it was good. It sure he wasn't great. I mean, no, it was great, man. That. You're you're great. You're a great player. What about the quarterbacks uh, coming into the National Football League here? Coming yeah. up, these, these rookies, these young guys. What what what's your impression, Phil? Well, you know, listen. I thought it was one of the best. I'm not going to say the best, or I'm marking it anywhere since I've been involved in the NFL. But I thought it was a really, really good group of quarterbacks coming out in the draft you know even um from all six of them that were drafted in the first round i could see all of them succeeding and of course we know how this league goes a couple of them are going to have rough times and all that but i think we'll have four starters no three starters opening day if i'm right here jj mccarthy i do not think he'll start o over sam darnold right um, i don't think that um Drake May is not going to start over J Jacoby Brissett. Michael Penix is not going to start over Kirk Cousins. So there's three right away. Now will 
Bo Nix find a way to be the starter out in Denver. That one's up in flux, I guess you'd say. Mm-hmm. But number one and number two, they're going to start. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how they play. They're not going to take them out unless it's injury. So, you know, Caleb Williams, you know, I've I kind of done this with you probably already, but I didn't like his tape when I watched it. Mm. I loved it. Oh, mm. my God. I mean, I my first impression is the first day I ever started watching all the draft picks and stuff coming out. I said, well, let me do the quarterbacks. Everybody wants to know. And I got done with Caleb Williams. I said, well, he's going to be number one in my eyes. I don't know if anybody can surpass what I saw. Wow. And it was so different than what I expected. So I thought he was tremendous in the pocket throwing the ball. Yeah. Accurate as hell everywhere on the run. I mean, he can do it all. And it was, it was, it was great. So he's going to start. And then of course, Jaden Daniels is going to start. And who did I miss? I'm missing somebody. Um, Drake may I'm missing. Mm, well, maybe that's it. They're the only two that we know are going to start for sure. Yeah. Those are the two, the two. Yes, definitely. That's right. Do you so. think they have enough around them, Bill? Do you think that they organizationally, they surrounded those guys with enough weapons to, to be successful as rookies? Yeah, I, I think they definitely have. You know, I like Washington, good receiving core. Yep. You know, Cliff Kingsbury probably can fit uh, Caleb Williams. I mean, um, Jaden Daniels really well, the kind of offense he's run in his career. We'll see how Cliff Kingsbury, can he adapt and, and be a little more, I hate to say it, NFL type, but be a little more in what the NFL does and get away from what you did in college. It worked well in college. But you had the best team and the best damn quarterback usually in the country or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so can they design an offense that really works for a rookie quarterback? The fact that he can really run extremely well. Yeah. All that. So that'll be interesting. And Caleb Williams, yeah, for a rookie with the first pick of the draft coming in, man, this might be one of the best setups we've seen in a long time. He has a chance to be successful right away. Yeah, it's not one of those deals where, oh, man, first pick of the draft, usually it's like, oh, you got nothing. They, oh, yeah. They've yeah. got some stuff. <laughs> they got, they, they, they've they done, done a pretty darn good job over there. Yeah, they have. You know, and it, look, we put – oh, we're going to analyze it to death during the year with all these guys and when's – who's going to start, why. It just it's – but that's the, the nature of the NFL right now. It's two people – I say this all the time – that they're going to judge after every game, the quarterback and the coach, the coach, even he makes all the right moves If they lose. Well, he, the, you can find something to moan and groan about. Right. And the quarterbacks, we overjudge them. Unfortunately, as you know, you stood in front of many quarterbacks. It's the offensive line, the system, the coaching. I mean, there's so much to it and you can be the most talented quarterback in history. If you don't have that cast, as you said, the supporting cast, you're going to fail. Yeah. yeah. You know, I love all that. It's, it's, nobody's more reliant on people around them in any sport than quarterbacks in the NFL. Maybe, maybe there's an example out there. I sure as heck can't think about it, but you know, it's, um, that's the way it is. And Dave, he'd be making a lot of money. <laughs> Aren't you? I mean, it, oh my gosh, it's crazy. I was talking to uh, Kenny Anderson the other day, uh, room oh, Kenny for a few years, and Kenny, of course, great player. Oh yeah, sixteen years in the league. Um, his combined salaries didn't total a million bucks. It's crazy. Wait, sixteen years and all those sixteen years put together, he didn't make a million. T- wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable. Maybe I'll quit complaining because that's. Not- I mean, I think his highest salary. I, th- I think his highest compensation. I think he said was like three fifty, right at the end, toward the end. Right. And, and uh, in the early stages, I mean, he played multiple years before he made twenty grand. Yeah, I was, I was going to say early yeah. in his career. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Kenny's a little older than I always remember, but of course, I was a big fan of his and all yeah. that. And uh, yeah, I, I, I tell people. People look at me. I said, "Look, man, my first four years were sixty, seventy, eighty, and ninety thousand dollars a year you know and i'll be honest i was drafted the seventh pick and i thought wow this is gonna be great i'm gonna have a lot of money and then when i saw the contract i went wow this is not what i expected i'm still <laughs> happy don't let's don't get it wrong right, right. Gonna, but i was i just thought it was going to be more than that yeah, and, uh, yeah. It, it, that scale it it for years and you know what really drove it finally where it started taking off a little was the usfl that really helped a lot when it came. No question. Out. 
no question. Yeah. I mean, the USFL was a was was a big deal, absolutely. And uh, what I was mean, your last year? My last year in in the NFL was yeah. was eighty three, and then I I went to the USL and USFL in eighty four and eighty five. Played New Jersey Generals with uh, Trump's Trump's team, and uh, right. yeah, I mean the USFL was a it was a it was a big deal um, in terms of changing things a little bit in the National Football League. But now, Bill, with all the all the revenue there is from from the t um, television broadcast rights and all forms, radio, television, all of it, uh, social media. I I mean, it's it's when do you, where do you think it's going to level off? I mean, it does level off a little bit, and then it takes another another jump. And but now it doesn't ever seem to want to level. It's just jumping, jumping, jumping. It's crazy. I mean, the, ne the next quarterback that signs is going to be the next uh, you know highest paid player in the National Football League, and you wonder. Where does it stop? It's not going to stop. Yeah. I mean, I don't see it. I I see it. To, I think it's just going to keep growing. And the, I mean, listen. I turn on the TV. I'm a big TV watcher, as you know. And I love. I let when I'm sitting here and I don't see anything on TV. I go, well, I turn the radio on and listen to NFL channel. Yeah. And see what everybody's talking about, and and it's just it's the same thing. I'm. I think somebody said it uh, last week. I heard them go, oh, my God, I can't wait for training camp open so we can start talking football more. And it's it's crazy. And, yeah, TV, all the TV games, all the movement around Christmas Day, which I guess is a Wednesday. There's going to be two games Christmas Day and all this. But the other thing is, too, how it's spreading everywhere else, Dave. I mean, over in the United Kingdom and yeah. Germany, all these places, I'm actually going to have a meeting – um, next week, uh, late next week about going to Germany and the United Kingdom to do stuff, to train quarterbacks, to work at it, or, huh. you know, kind of try to advance it that way because, you know, the NFL is just moving forward and more countries than ever are playing professional football. I mean, so it's, yeah. it, it's so I guess the answer to your question, we're doing it all right here. It's going to keep going forward. No doubt. Let's see. Is Matt going to be over there with you working with quarterbacks? Absolutely. If I go, he's got to go. <laughs> Chris is too busy, though, isn't he? Yeah, I know. He's got enough on his plate. We do, too. <laughs> you know, we're doing a lot, too. But I know. You guys are. It's but I'm excited about I, – I said in, in an article to Neil Best at Newsday here in New York, and I said, if I can make a living just throwing and watching quarterbacks and do it that way, that would really be – just the best. And then I would give up everything else. And, and, you know, I do a lot with a lot of kids, you sure. know, college, high school, even before high school. Uh, of course I do it for free. And, but you know, I got to also do other work cause I need to keep the money coming a little bit sure. through here uh, and all that. So um, yeah, that, that's great. Yeah. But over, I would love to go over into Europe and, see what they got, watch a few quarterbacks, train some, and see. I know the NFL can't wait to get more and more of these people into the NFL. It's going to take a, quite a few years, I think, for it to really work. But, you know, you got to start somewhere. Man, it's got to be a great feeling, though, Phil. I mean, here, here you are, um, Hall of Fame in, with the New York Giants. Should be, yeah. You're a Hall of Famer in my mind. You're a Hall of Famer. You're a Hall of Fame quarterback. Well, you're too kind. Then you get into the broadcast world. And on top of that, doing what you're doing, helping kids uh, at the quarterback position. And I'm sure over the years, it's like, man, look how so-and-so has turned out, man. And you have to have a great internal feeling that, you know what? I might have had a little something to do with that. How, how good a feeling is that when kids oh. you work with just blossom and develop? It's the best. Yeah. Oh my God, it's the best. The best ones are a couple. I'm not going to name their names. They're starters and college football right now and they didn't even get the start for the high school team they were on so they had to well you know so they had to switch schools to get a chance to start and then they had to be walk-ons and then they became starters and all the other all the scholarship quarterbacks says said well we gotta go because we're never going to beat this guy out now because wow. he's really good wow. and uh, hopefully I'll be telling that story to you this next off season in the NFL draft, but yet, no, it's, it's beyond um, a great feeling. The the feeling is, is when you're throwing with a kid and if they have a little talent, of course, 
that they have enough talent, you can really make it progress. Yeah. And when it's not meant to be, no matter how hard you work, it's just not going to work out the way we all want it to. But that when they do something on the field and whatever, they turn to you and they smile and I go, I always say, yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. I know, man. I used to be able to do that. Can't do it anymore. But it is a great feeling to drop back and just know you have great control of the football and throw it exactly where you want it at the right speed and all these other things, decisions, you name it. And it's uh, it's so much fun at all ages. And even with young kids, fourth and fifth graders, I know you think, no, parents bring their fourth and fifth graders to get trained by Matt and I get over there too. Wow. And Dave, all I can say is you go, what grade you in? And they go, oh, Mr. Sims, I'm going into the fifth grade next year. And I go, this is ridiculous. You are too good oh, man. to keep going into the damn fifth grade. But crazy. yeah, it's crazy. But that's in every, it's in all sports. And uh, it's really taken off with quarterbacks, that's for sure. So uh, when we were talking about the, the revenue um, and the, the amount of money and, and the broadcast uh, side of things for the National Football League, what do you make of this direct TV, NFL? clash that's going on right now well i know it'd been going on for a long time whatever and then i guess it was last thursday i'm not a thursday or friday thursday i guess i'm driving and i heard it on the radio and my son christopher works with mike florio um yeah on peacock uh four days a week i think he does I, you know I get all the logistics i watch him every day and i got my notepad in front of me going say something good that i can steal today please <laughs> <laughs> so, he's he's great phil no he does a great job he's got you know, he's unbelievable she, he, the apple didn't fall far from the tree my man he's great well the, i always tell you the difference between my two sons and me i gotta watch a game for let's just put some i gotta watch it for at least an hour to get the scope and after 15 minutes they've already breezed through the game and then give you an answer to everything i go damn i just can't do it it takes me forever <laughs> but so that's, but listen, that direct TV thing, I, I guess it's been out there for a long, long time and not to get into the particulars, but it's basically, you had to buy the whole package and many people argue they just want to buy their team that they love, right. but they don't live in that area to get them on network TV. Right. So that's the simplified version of it. And they won their case. And what, what was it? 4.7 billion dollars yeah that's a lot of money even for nfl owners could be tripled right i mean it'd be tripled. yeah yeah, yeah that's what happens if they win that judgment when it comes about but this thing could i don't know it'll drag out dave it's going to be quite a few years i think before we finally get the final answer and all that but hey by then the nfl owners a lot of them just go okay we lost let's write a check let's move on Boy. i don't know there's there's just a lot of money in it in, in pro football right now. It's it's that's why when you I I as I probably have said to you, sitting on the desk with Boomer Siason at the other end. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, but he would during a commercial he'd go, Do you know so and so is making <laughs> and I'm just go, and you know, in his career, he's made hundred and ninety-seven million dollars so far. And I go, Boomer, I don't care. <laughs> I, I'm just happy to be here and I, you know, I'm, I'm good. And then one day he said something to me and he sent me a text while we were on the show and I read it and the commercial came up and I said, Boomer, I got to tell you the truth. It's bothering me now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll tell you, it's, it, it's, it was, I, I mean, a sheer joy. Now, I, if you like football, you and Boomer on the set for, for, years together i mean that was pure joy I, I would i would never miss man you guys gonna miss it gonna miss it big time well, me too i'll miss i'll miss a lot of it you know but the other thing is i'm doing so much many other things yeah. that i really truly enjoy and it is like a little bit of a freedom i wish yeah. we could have yeah. somewhere in our show which it really isn't so i don't know how many minutes we're actually on tv right but to me and boomer just have three minutes just to look at each other and go you the Biggest dumbass I've ever worked with, Boomer. <laughs> I mean, I just, uh, it would have been, oh, you know, it, yeah. even you guys, just, you guys I would, are great, man. It's great. Dave, before shows, I sit on that set, we'd sit there for an hour and kind of do a little rehearsal, like, okay, you're going to talk and, you know, whatever. And it was freedom because I just ripped. 
<laughs> I rip everybody, <laughs> but he just mm. and he uh, go. It, it's it's ten o'clock and you're already killing me. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, he loved it though. He wow. loves it. One year, I told you this. I think it was three years ago. First show of the year, and you know we. I said, Bill Cowell, good to see you, man. Nate, good to see you and our special guest over here. Oh, my God. George Hamilton. And everybody, <laughs> I said, Boomer, how tanned are you? What would you do, sit in a damn microwave the whole offseason? <laughs> uh, it, was, it was unbelievable uh, how tanned he was. Uh, and he puts his hand up near his face. It's white as a ghost <laughs> on his face. <laughs> And he just goes, oh, my God, you're already picking on me. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah. Well, God, if you, what are you doing? <laughs> I thought Man. the George Hamilton uh, was a pretty good. Oh, that's classic. Yeah, yeah that is that is absolutely classic. Oh, yeah, but it, we, we had so much fun there. And, yeah, we could never do a podcast together because <laughs> <laughs> we would yeah. never get past. Ripping on each other, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it would be, it would be yeah. brutal. But, I hear you. Uh, the ex bingo Boomer and Tyson. <laughs> and all he does is bitch about the bingos. Oh, rah, 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 rah. Uh, but yeah, and him and Cower. At least I want to listen to that stuff anymore when the Bengals play the Steelers. Oh, it's a big week, coach. <laughs> the Steelers. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, whatever. Enough about Boomer. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.